afternoon. I want to welcome you to the League of Women Voters and all those in the audience and those who are watching on TV. And on March 8th, uh, not only are we having our public information meeting, but there is also a meeting at 5.30 in Salem regarding the 100th anniversary of the suffrage movement in Oregon. And you're all invited to that if you would like to go. So, but now I want to in introduce to you Sydney Eustrom from Mount Hood Community College speaking to us on post-secondary education. Thank you, and it's my pleasure to be here today. So when I spoke to Marlene about coming and speaking to the group, I wanted to be clear on what my role was out at the college. So I am the manager of student outreach and recruitment as well as high school services. So we've linked those two areas together, but really when it comes down to it, what my team and I do each day is work with the high schools and start having those conversations. It can start even with the middle schools or younger, but a lot of our effort is with our in-district high schools. So we've got about 16 in-district high schools that we focus on. And so our primary market right now when we're recruiting are those 16 in-district high schools. So what I want to talk to you about today is just some of the practices that we do when we go out to the high schools. What kind of conversations are we having? What's on the plate for these high school seniors when we talk to them about coming to college? Who's coming to college? Who's not? Why are some coming? Why are some not? And then after I give you guys just a kind of rundown of what we do, I'd love to hear some questions and feedback that all of you have. Sound good? OK. So when I mention those 16 in-district high schools, that does not mean that we are limited just to those 16 in-district high schools. Of course, we open our doors to all students coming from different high schools, whether it's in Oregon, in Multnomah County, outside. But a lot of our focus right now is the in-district because we are the community's college. So what we do is we want to make sure that our efforts are relevant to the students' needs. So that means that we need to be really, really familiar with our student community each year because each year it changes and there's different needs. Whether it's financial needs, talking about scholarships, talking about financial aid, whether it's academic needs and they need that preparation to come up to the college level or if it's that transfer transition. So students know that they want to get their bachelor's degree, but either they don't quite know how to get there or they don't know what it is they want to study, but they know that they want to pursue a post-secondary degree. So we help them figure out the whole purpose of a community college. And we've got two main purposes. One is the whole job prep option. So we speak to students about the career technical options that we have out at the college. For example, automotive tech, dental hygiene, nursing, integrated media. There are tons of options that fall into that career technical category. So those ones have jobs associated with them that require certain credentials, certain training, but not necessarily the four year or the bachelor degree route. So we've got those options at the college. But then we also, of course, have a whole array of transfer options. Because when we speak to students, we want to ask them who goes to college. And that's one of the first questions that we ask. We want to know, all right, what does a student look like who goes to college? Well, when we first had those conversations, we heard athletes, students with a 4.0 GPA, and students who have money. But we're opening up that to now say, everybody goes to college and everybody has the right to and everybody can have the opportunity to. But we just have to start having that dialogue on how do you get there. So when we talk about the transfer option, it's exciting because we can talk about going and being a U of O duck or an OSU beaver, going to be a PSU Viking or getting out of state and transferring <laughs> to go get your bachelor's degree. But for a lot of students, a community college serves as that kind of stepping ground. So they can come onto that campus if they live nearby, it's comfortable territory for them. A lot of the students have already come onto our campus for campus tours. We really encourage that with the high schools. And for the most part, we see a lot of students coming on for campus tours that are either led by themselves, meaning we lead those tours, but they take the initiative to contact us to get that tour, or high schools and middle schools and even some elementary schools in the area will bring their students on for a campus tour. But as soon as we get them on our campus, 
We want them to get a real sense of what college is about because it's a little bit different than high school, right? <laughs> so when we talk about that, we have a presentation that's called High School Versus College. And it sounds simple and it may sound silly, but what we want to make sure that students understand is one, college, you are responsible for yourself. So there's nobody who's coming into your bedroom, well there may be mom or dad who's doing this, but you are responsible for getting yourself up and getting yourself to class and also the financial responsibility. Because when you're in high school, your tuition is paid for. You're not showing up each month or each term with a paycheck to Reynolds High School or to Park Rose High School, but at Mount Hood or at any school or university, obviously there's money involved. So you really wanna emphasize that money is something that we gotta figure out, but we can figure it out with you. And one other thing when we're meeting with students is to give them the college vocabulary. Because I could be talking to a room of middle school students, high school students, even people who have completed high school or who haven't. But when I speak about financial aid, we want to make sure that everybody in the room really understands what financial aid is. Also, words like transfer. For some students, those terms aren't used in the household. They're not talking about them in their everyday class in elementary school and middle school. And so we want to give them the basic vocabulary so when we're talking about college they feel com comfortable and confident talking to their parents or talking to their friends so for financial aid we explain that that's money that's going to help you pay for college and then we break it down about loans about grants work study and scholarship opportunities then we also talk about transfer which i just talked about so it's a student who would say go to Mount Hood Community College for their first year, first two years, and then move on to a four-year university or college. And with some of our transfer options, a student can enter, once they've completed the first two years, as a junior at that university or college, which is a really nice transition, we'll try and make it seamless. Um, but in our outreach efforts and our recruitment efforts and our high school services programs, we have got to make it relevant and intentional. And I think sometimes we miss that. And so a lot of our work is finding out what does each school need from us? What do their students need? And it can be different. David Douglas can have a different student population and they need our attention somewhere else than what Gresham High School needs. So that's why we, as the outreach team at Mount Hood Community College, have got to really go and listen and that's something that we're working on. I know we need to be working and building up our relationships with the high schools. And so that's an approach that we've got to just be proactive with. Um, but in addition to that, we've got what's called inReach. This is a brand new concept that we've got out at the college. So the idea behind inReach, so we know outreach, okay? So outreach is kind of a long-term goal of serving the needs of the community or serving the needs of those high schools. InReach is very, very similar, but it's for those students who are already somehow using the college. And using, I mean, they're taking credit recovery courses. So credit recovery <laughs> courses are for high school students who have not passed a class that they need in order to graduate and receive their high school diploma. So they can recover that credit by coming out to the college and taking that class. We also have GED classes. We have an adult high school diploma. So those students aren't in classes right now that are degree seeking, meaning that they're not there trying to get their associates. What they're working towards is some sort of high school completion. So what inReach is, is we're working with those students to show them the transition between those classes, so say they're taking a credit recovery class, and how eventually they can become a Mount Hood student. Because they're right there on our campus, we would be fools if we weren't doing some sort of outreach to those students. And we call it inReach because they're on our campus. So we're reaching within our community that we already have there on campus. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, a few other things that we're involved in right now. So out of the Portland Mayor's office, they've got what's called the Future Connect program. And we're excited to be a part of that. I'm just now joining the committee for the Future Connect. And what it is, is it's taking a kind of aggressive approach at assisting those students who either are academically at risk or they're economically disadvantaged, but really helping them 
transition from high school to college and letting them know that it's a possibility. And so there's financial assistance with that. It's giving them access to staff so that they know that when they come onto the college campus, there is somebody that they know, that they recognize, and that they feel comfortable going to. Because when we talk to students, some of their biggest concerns is, I don't know anybody out at the colleges. Nobody's going to care about me. I'm a stranger. I'm a new face. And so we want to make sure that all those students who are trying to make that transition from high school to college know a face on campus, know where to go, and make sure that they get that support service, which I think is pretty cool. Um, there's also something that's going through the chancellor's office um, for the OUS system, but it's the middle school Latino initiatives. So that's all brand new talk, but basically what can we start doing as the public universities, some of the privates, but then also the community colleges. How can we start really addressing this college discussion with middle school students? And that is not too young to start having these conversations. Because there was a story yesterday, I was at the Education Summit, and there was a story of a woman who brought her six-year-old with her to class at Portland State University. And he's already saying, I'm a college student. And that's what we want, a six-year-old already knowing I feel comfortable on this campus, and this is where I'm going to be, and this is what I'm going to pursue at the age of six. So it's cool to start having those conversations, <laughs> even in elementary school. Um, let's see if there's anything else to address. Another thing that we're doing is I work with about eight to 10 student leaders. They're called our student outreach and recruitment team. We call them the SOAR team. They're not sore physically, <laughs> they're sore. And what their role is, is to go and speak to high school students, speak to students who are coming onto our campus who are interested in attending, but really giving students an authentic and real perspective of a student. Because I can sit here and I can tell all this room about how fabulous Mount Hood Community College is. And I know you guys will all agree with me and believe in me, but especially for students, they can look at me and say, get real. I know you're hired by Mount Hood Community College. I know you're going to say positive things. So that's why we love having our students do a lot of the talking, because they're going to be real, they're going to be authentic, and they're going to give that student perspective. So that's really important in our outreach efforts that we've got current students, some that have gone to Park Row, some that are coming from David Douglas, um, but going out there and really sharing their their whole treatment of school, how it works for them, why they chose Mount Hood Community College, how they afford it, what it every day looks like. So if they're going to class on just Tuesdays and Thursdays, what are they doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday? So it's those just fun but important conversations coming from a student. So that's one other thing that we really want to focus on. So have any questions or ideas, suggestions that we could be doing? I'm just so delighted to hear the emphasis put on the technical training because we haven't heard that for a long time. Everything's been transferred, mm -hmm. four year college and everything. And so many kids aren't going to go four years college. Right. So we need that desperately. Right. So I'm just delighted to hear oh. the emphasis back there where it used to be. Well, good. And I think that sometimes, I mean, we go and speak to classes, of course, our main encouragement is everybody can go to college, but we also need to know what the student's reasoning is, what their personal goal, goals are, and if we're not listening to that, then really we're not doing anybody justice. And so we know we've got tons and tons and tons of students that those career technical programs are perfect fits for them. Another thing that I have a hard time doing is when we go and talk to high school students, one of the main questions I get asked is, what's a career field that I'm going to get a job immediately and be making $100,000? And I look at them and I'm like, you are a big dreamer and I love it, especially since Mount Hood's whole motto is be your dream. And I'm not about to break that dream, but at the same time, I really want to be real with these students and let them know, hey, let's look at the economy, let's look at the job market. Do you want to stay in Gresham? Do you want to expand to Portland? Do you want to stay in Oregon? But let's really understand who's hiring, who's not, what are the training or credentials that you need for it? And for a lot of students, the career technical is an appropriate and perfect fit for them. So definitely. It seems to me that when the college was first beginning, that the transfer into a four-year college, quite often they would not accept English 101. 
it, it didn't, you had to retake it once mm -hmm. you got to college. And you're saying that now... So now, yes, we've got articulation agreements. So basically a handshake with all of the public four-year institutions in Oregon. So what we mean by that is we've got, it's an AAOT, so Associate of Art Oregon Transfer. If a student pursues that two-year degree, that right there sets them up with a curriculum that they can enter in as that junior. Because you see that, and the woman that I work with, she'll always emphasize to students, hey, you want to make sure that you're meeting with your academic advisors and knowing that these classes are going to transfer in. Because if you're not doing the AOT, but you know you want to transfer, you do run that risk of showing up at the four-year institution's door, and they're saying, that's great that you did this English class or this writing class, but we're going to have to have you retake it, and you're going to have to pay money for a class you've already taken. So with these articulation agreements that we have set up, it guarantees that a student will not have to repeat those courses. And that's something that's it's not relatively new. They started that maybe like in the past 10 to 15 years. Um, but you'll see it growing and growing and to some of the private universities as well, which is exciting because that opens a lot more doors for our students who do want to transfer. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Well, is the, the hiring rate greater for those who have, students who have taken a two-year program in, in various technical classes and things like that? Uh, yeah. Compared to those students who have not, who have graduated from high school but go into a career, career technical position? Yeah, you can see that. And I don't have the numbers on that, but that's part of our presentation. So we'll look at the unemployment rates and compare those unemployment rates based on the level of education. We'll also talk about how much money you can be making and really how that's going to boost up your resume. So, I mean, I'm thinking of our automotive tech program and how that program has a really, really close to, and I don't quote me on this, <laughs> but it's almost like a 99% job guarantee out of that program because the industry recognizes that Mount Hood is training these students with the credentials and with that training that they need and that they're looking for at, say, the Ford dealership or at Chrysler. Um, and so it really does pay off to get some of these trainings. And another thing that I want to emphasize with the students is Everybody has their own timeline. We have students who, they love being in the classroom. They love school. And so the idea of being in a classroom for eight more years to become a doctor or whatever it is, that's exciting to them. But you have those other students who are thinking, I know I need to get a little bit more education, but I can't stand being in that classroom or school is just not an appropriate fit for me. So that's why there are those options. We've got the two-year career technical, we've got the transfer programs, but then there's a bunch of one-year certificates, we've got a career pathways program, um, there's also apprenticeship programs out there, and so there are so many options. We've got over 120 different options out at the college. So it can fit your timeline and your career goals. Yeah. Uh, besides the high school students, are you getting a larger portion of, uh, of older adults who lost their jobs who need to retrain to get back in the job market? Absolutely, yes. Especially within the past two to three years, just because of the economy and what it's done with people being laid off. We see a lot of students who are returning, and they're not necessarily seeking an associate degree, but they're certainly seeking additional training to boost up that resume. So say that their job did not require computer skills. Well, now if you're trying to find a job, you're gonna have to know how to use the computer, how to work with Excel spreadsheets or whatever the case might be. So we do have a lot of students returning who have been laid off, trying another route, um, whether that's through one of our certificate programs or an associate's degree. But certainly you'll see like our median age has gone up because of the student population returning. Yes, definitely. Any other questions yet? With the amount of the non-English speaking people that we have through our community, yeah. what's being offered to teach people English? So we've got um, a bunch of classes. So we've got our ESL and ENL classes. And um, currently out of the Maywood Park campus and also over at the Burning Center, I believe they're offering more and more of those sort of classes. And that's another area where we really need to take a proactive approach because as soon as those students have completed that, those classes, what's the next step? And so when we're talking about this inReach, great. So you've finished up these classes, the ENL or the ESL. 
now let's move you on to actual degree program once you've taken those classes. And I had mentioned um, briefly about the career pathways. So the career pathways is, I believe it's, kind of, it's like a one year program, but it sets students up in classes, whether it's in like culinary, they've got a welding program, but it sets students up so that they're getting some basic training and they can go and work or they can return and then finish it up and get an associate's and eventually maybe get a bachelor's. But it's kind of one of those, well, career pathway. So it's taking on a pathway to get that career, but there can be some pit stops along the way. And with those, we've got a bunch that are for ESL students. So not only are they getting some ESL training, but then they can come into these programs and really get some effective career technical training as well, which is important. Yeah. The taxes that are being paid are not enough to support schools and colleges. Uh, are you on any committees on how to spend it and how to cut it and so on? <laughs> Good question. I wish that? I was on one of those committees and I wish I could talk about that. Unfortunately, I'm not, but I know that that's obviously an ongoing conversation, not just at Mount Hood, but everywhere. I mean, even when we go and talk to the high schools, it's an issue. So it certainly is at the top of everyone's list to be proactive, to get the word out. I mean, even our student leaders, that's one of their top agenda items is we've got to make it relevant or make it known. And people know that we need money to keep our services going and going. But there are certainly people at the college who are actively involved and engaged in those kind of conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Have you noticed an increase in um, uh, the student population? who do speak other languages, who, who do not have English as their first language? Is there an increase? In it's always growing, and I think that's part of the reason why now we've expanded it to the Maywood Park campus, the Burning Center, to really help accommodate that. Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't work too closely with those programs, um, but I do know that we've had to respond to it, and we've done it with open arms, saying, all right, let's." Let's offer more classes. Let's be a community college for, for all, since we've got that open door policy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ask away. I, I don't want to monopolize. But uh, do you have an idea of, of what the dropout rate is for those who start uh, toward uh, an associate's degree? And as well as those who <coughs> who plan to go on to uh, a four-year institution. Yeah, I don't know specifically. I was reading before I came here. Let's see. And this is just this is speaking about Multnomah County, so not specific to Mount Hood. But it did say that um, only one third of students that graduate from high school in Multnomah County continue on to the post-secondary. So whether that's at Mount Hood Community College, Portland Community College, or going on to a university. Um, but then it says of those students, so okay, we're talking about one third of students that graduate from high school end up going to a post-secondary institution. But of that one third, less than a half earn a degree or a certificate. And so that's where we really need to be strategic in how we approach these students and work with our persistence and retention. And that's something that we're currently working on. I work with this Office of Student Success and Enrollment Management. And so right now, it's the whole strategic enrollment plan and how can we really track this? How can we identify why are students leaving? Is it because of finances? Is it because they're just not having fun? Is it because life happens? And so what we can do with that information is then contact these students or contact the issues and figure out, all right, why are we not persisting? Who's going on to the four-year institutions? Who's completing at the four years? Because sometimes we kind of lose track of those students once they move on to the four-year colleges and universities. So we're really, really trying to be strategic, not to overuse the word, but figure out a way to track that and then respond to it. So we're working on it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. When you're going into the high schools, do you go into specific classes? Do you go into an assembly situation? What do you do? Good question. So it's really based on what the high schools want. So in about late August or early September, 
our outreach team will go and meet with the high school counselors and we'll give them, we call it our outreach menu, but it's got a list of workshops that we host and some workshops, like I was mentioning earlier, can be like high school versus college. There's also how do I pay for college, scholarship writing. So we'll go in with this menu and based on what the students' needs are and what the counselors identify as the needs, either we'll go and have an open, like during lunchtime, students have the opportunity to come and meet with us and we'll be in their career center. Some, they've got specific targeted groups that they want us to work with. So it could be a senior class at Reynolds High School and we'll go and speak to that class. So it really varies on who we're speaking to, but we leave that up to the high schools to kind of identify where the need is, where they think we should be. Um, but then we also participate in, you know, I think we just attended David Douglas's community college night. So that gave us the opportunity not only to speak with any student who showed up, but also parents. And I forgot to mention that, but parents are so, so key to our high school outreach efforts. I can't emphasize that enough. And that's something that our outreach team really needs to push forward with is getting the parents involved. But we do leave it up. So we've got a whole variety. It could be we're seated at a lunch table. It could be that we're going into a classroom or it could be that we're doing an after school or evening event at the high schools. So a whole mix. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what is the response from the high schools? Are, are they enthused about this program and um, do they contact you? Um, I mean the college, do they contact the college? Yeah, good questions. I think it's mixed. And I think that's where our outreach team really needs to step it up and we need to put out that hand and say, we're being real about this, you know, because it's so easy to do the talk, but now it's our role to walk the walk. And so that's where we got to keep having those conversations with the high schools. And right now who we work with the most are the high school counselors. So I attend each month the East County Counselors meeting where they've got representatives from each of the high school's counselors come. And that way we can get a real sense of what's going on in the high schools, what are the issues, and maybe how can the college respond to that. Um, so some will contact us directly, they'll contact the outreach office, they'll contact the college. Others, it's gonna take us knocking on their door, but that's what we've got to do. And for some, we've got to prove ourselves, and I'm happy and ready to be doing that. Others, they are eager and happy to have us there. So it's definitely a mixed response, but it just, it's going to take time and take work, and we've got the patience, but we also have the energy and excitement to spread the word. I mean, it's exciting. Talking about education, you can't go wrong. <laughs> How much is tuition running now? Tuition, so right now it's a little over 3,000. If you were going full-time, and full-time I mean taking about 12 credits, so that's four classes a term. So if you were going fall, winter, and spring, it's going to be a little over 3,000. But when I say that to a student, I don't want them to go ahead and budget just 3,000 because obviously in addition to just the tuition fees, you've got your textbooks, if you're moving out of mom and dad's or your guardian's place, you've got to consider rent, you've got to consider groceries, you've got to consider a life if you want to go have some entertainment. And so that's one of our exercises with high school students is to let them know this is how much tuition costs, but there's a lot more involved with the cost of college than just tuition. Yeah? Are there many release time students leaving the high school senior uh, group, for example, to go over to Mount Hood to take um, like cosmetology before they graduate and to, to have those credits? Good question. Um, we do have the expanded options program, but not too many students take advantage of that because there's other options. And so one program that um, we have is the College Now program, and that is actually in the high school. So we've all heard about AP, advanced placement, we know IB courses. Well, the College Now program, those are classes that are already being held at the high school but a student can get high school credit for their high school diploma at the same time that they're getting college credit. Now there's specific criteria that they must meet, meaning that the instructor who's teaching, say an English class, can't just give every student college credit. They've got to match their curriculum to obviously what we're teaching out at the college because they're gonna be getting the college credit for it, but then also what their educational background is. So if they've got a master's in the subject, that's another way that they can qualify, at least for the lower division transfer. So we've got that at each of the high schools right now. And what I love about it 
is that those College Now classes cost students a one-time fee of $35. So say that a high school has six or seven or eight College Now courses, they only pay $35 and when they graduate, they can come out already having four college classes knocked out. That could be a term's worth of classes and they only had to pay $35. One, if you're going to the college, you're probably gonna be paying for at least one term a few hundred bucks. So that's a great option. With Reynolds High School, we've got a pretty unique program. It's called Middle College. So that is a program that's targeted at students who are academically fit. They fit the criteria of, you know, the 3 point to the 4.0 student. They've got great attendance. But for some reason, there's something about that high school environment that's not a good fit. So sometimes we lose those students because they get bored. So this is a program that allows those students to come and take all of their classes at Mount Hood Community College. So in the end, they're going to get their Reynolds High School diploma, but they get to do their junior and senior year at the college. And for a lot of those students who are getting restless in the classroom at the high school, or there's something that's just really interrupting their way to be a successful student at the high school, they can come and do it at the college. So they're getting their feet wet already on our campus, which is fun. Um, and then, of course, the credit recovery. So that's for the students who didn't pass the class and have to repeat it, but take it on our campus. And the expanded options does allow a student to come out to our college and take a class, but it's got to be a class that's not currently offered at the high school. So it's a class that they need to graduate, and we can help accommodate that. But um, right now, kind of the college now takes that over rather than them coming to our campus. Uh, do you do any social things to encourage the high schools and in, in-district high school students to come out there just, just to get acquainted? Just to hang out? That's one thing that we need to work on. And that's why, unfortunately, we've got some amazing student leaders. So we've got our Associated Student Government, ASG. We've got our Student Activities Board, who are responsible for planning all the activities. And then, again, I mentioned my SOAR team. So, what we really want to do with those students is to start planning events that will attract and invite high school students onto our campus. Because we have high school students coming onto our campus almost every day to do a campus tour, to meet with faculty, but we want them to have fun on the campus too and really engage with our students. And so right now we're linking clubs. So if you've got a specific club at the high school and we've got that same club at our college, Let's have those two clubs meet together, and whether it's just to kind of exchange information, have a you know, general conversation about the college and how that club can relate to that school. But one thing that I'd love to see is more like service learning linked in with some of the high school students. So it could be that, you know, for Earth, for, excuse me, for Earth Day, our student leaders host an event, say it's planting trees or something, but they encourage and invite students from the high schools to come and take part. And I'd love to see more of that, definitely. Yeah. When, uh, when Mount Hood Community College was conceived, uh, the, the word community was stressed. And so they uh, also planned non-credit courses for the general public that just simply wanted to take a class in stained glass or whatever. Uh, has that decreased over the year or has it still being used? Oh, it's still being used, definitely. So some of you may have noticed in the mail, we used to always send out our class schedule. So you would see all of the classes that we have offered, whether it's degree seekers or whether it's our community ed courses. Because we want to be economically and environmentally friendly, we've done away with that. So you're no longer getting a class schedule of all the classes that we have. But once a term you should be receiving in the mail, our little pamphlet that has articles on the college, but it also has all of those continuing ed or community ed courses, which could be the stained glass. I know there's a class on how to be funny. I should take it. There's classes. Um, there's a whole array of classes, and there's some great people behind those classes who are working each day to figure out what the community wants, and let's serve them with a class. So yeah, we have those for fun classes, definitely. Any other questions? or suggestions. I'd love to hear suggestions on what we could be doing. <laughs> I think you're very innovative and I'm very impressed by all your, your, uh, your out, outreach programs. I think that's very needed 
because some of the children are too, um, uh, they, they have not been exposed to, uh, to going on to education, to those, those ideas. So I, I'm very impressed. Well, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come and share some of the stuff that we're going on at the college. Because, you know, a lot of it, it's, it doesn't go under the rug, but it's not anything that we need to go out and boast about. But at the same time, it's so cool. I mean, that there are these options available. And again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get young students onto our campus. And, you know, we joked at first thinking, oh, elementary school students coming out for a campus tour, what on earth are we going to talk about? Because, you know, normally for a presentation, we talk about how much it costs, how you enroll. For an elementary school student, they're not going to be interested in. But it's so cool to see how excited they are. We had a group of middle schoolers, and it was, I love this moment. They looked up and they saw some students coming out of a classroom, and they're like, those are college students. <laughs> and so what we always love to do is if they come in a classroom, we tell them, you are a college student right now. And just the excitement in their eyes of, and it sounds cheesy, I know, but at the same time, it is, it's so fun to feel that energy in the room of these young students who, they're sitting in that college classroom and for that day, they get to be a college student. That'll hopefully, hopefully get them energized for their future. Yeah. Any other? Questions or comments? Yeah. Do you know what the process is for replacing Dr. Ski? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know it's it makes us heart sick, and he's he's set up a great structure for us to work with, and I think we're just you know excited. We can't take it any other way. Of course, we're going to miss him. He has been fabulous to work with. I can't say that enough. And at the same time, this is just another opportunity, and I know we're constantly having change, but we'd be fools not to embrace change. So we're gonna have fun with it, and fortunately, he's really set a great structure for us, and so now it's in our hands to follow through and keep making it happen, and we're all capable of doing that, I have no doubt. Yeah. Yeah? You mentioned getting parents involved in, is you, when, when you have these meetings in the evenings, I assume they're mostly in the evenings mm -hmm. for parents, uh, what do you stress the most, I guess, is because yeah. so many people cannot understand the value of college mm -hmm. or the value, period. And that's part of the conversation, is really what is the value? What kind of doors are being open? Are doors being open if you go and get your associate's degree or if you go and get your bachelor's degree? So we try and present that information, and it's factual information that we pulled off, but then it's also students sharing their stories of really how college has helped transform their opportunities. And not only is it opening up job opportunities, but just their concept and their thinking has changed by being in the college setting. And one of the main things that we work with um, parents on is how do you afford it? And so not only are we talking about filling out that FAFSA application, so the free application for federal student aid, but also how do you find scholarships and how do you budget for it? Because that's a scary thing, especially right now. I don't know, but I don't know too many students or parents that have 3000 or more dollars in their pocket ready to spend on education. And so part of our conversations with the parents are really, how are we going to make this affordable? How do you find those opportunities to make it affordable? And then what is an everyday college day like. I know that sounds crazy, but for a lot of people, they think, well, what are they even doing there? We understand the high school setting, but when they go to college, is it really that much different? And so I think one thing that we haven't done yet, but I'd like to see is really, especially for our first generation students whose parents or guardians have not gone to college, to get them on that college campus and really let them know that it's a comfortable space to be. So, um, and again, the, when I was talking about the vocab, not only is that important for the students to understand, but for a lot of parents, it's giving them that vocab. That's giving them the key to then feel comfortable calling the college. Some people have got a fear of, I don't even know what to ask the college when I'm calling. Like, what, what's admissions and registration? Like, who, who's dealing with that? The business office? What, what's their role? And so we want to give that general information to them to make sure that everybody just is comfortable, confident, and understands how to proceed. Yeah. Are there many work study opportunities available? 
Yes, yes, there are quite a bit. But of course, it's kind of one of those first come, first serve, so you want to jump on that. But I can't emphasize enough how important it is if you get offered a work study position to take it. And why I emphasize that is because by having a job on campus, you can see when we're talking about retention and persistence, a student who's got a job on campus is so much more likely to persist with their education at the college and we don't end up losing them because they've got a job on campus and that's a responsibility outside of the responsibility of being a student, but they're also accountable to somebody. And so we've got a few students on our SOAR team who are work study students and I'm not gonna mother them at all, but knowing that not only do they have to show up for their job, but hey, they're already on campus for their job, so they're gonna show up to their class. So I think personally, work study is a great opportunity for students. I did work study all throughout college and it definitely helped me with a little extra money in my pocket, helping me pay for tuition, but also keeping me on board and on track and on that campus going to my classes. Yeah, but there are lots, lots of opportunities for work study and student employment, which is a little bit different than work study. So how does the student employment work? work? So um, students can come and meet with a woman named Kat Parrish, and she is responsible for the work study and student employment opportunities. So, you know, similarly, like when you're trying to find a job and you would go to Mount Hood's website and look up employment opportunities, well, there's also a student employment opportunities list. So if you go on through the financial aid website for our college, you'll see there's work study and student employee listings. And so it's a matter of contacting the people, seeing if you fit their criteria. Um, but what's really cool about having a job on campus is the staff that you're working for, they understand that the top priority is you being a student. So they're going to accommodate your work schedule and your hours to being a student. And sometimes you don't get that if you're not working on the college because some person could say, that's great that you're a student, but priority right now is that you be here. And so by being a student worker, <laughs> we tend to accommodate to your class schedule, which is pretty nice. But yeah, just a matter of going online, seeing what options are out there and applying. How big is the district um, that, that, like a student coming from, is a student coming from like Eugene considered an in-district or where? So in-district is like, I think we've got five zones. So it covers Gresham, Troutdale, um, we also go out to Hood River Valley High School. Um, we've got Sandy. We kind of tinker in a little bit into Portland. That's when we'll hit up like, you know, Centennial High School and stuff. So it's our surrounding. There's the Park Rose, the David Douglas. Um, let's see what else we've got. Uh, Happy Valley, Maywood, Rockwood, Gateway. So it's that area. Eugene would be considered out of district. Even like some of the students in the Portland Public Schools are considered out of district. And that does not mean that we don't do outreach efforts to them, but because there's already community colleges in their area, like Lane Community College in Eugene, Portland Community College, they're already serving those students. And so if, if we've got a specific or unique program that those community colleges don't offer, then that's when we go and share information. But we tend to keep it to kind of our neighborhoods that surround the college. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been fun. <laughs>